Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, November 20th, 2017. Uh, from time to time, I like to do an overview of the market, uh, looking at the sectors that make up the market. When I say the market, the broad market, typically, you know, when people use that term, they're referring to the S&P 500. That's the most diversified of all the indices. And uh, this pie chart here shows you how that's broken down. So as you can see, just three sectors, three out of the 11 sectors account for more than half of the return. So what I'll do in this video is go through the, I'll, I'll touch on the charts of the broad markets itself, as well as the NASDAQ 100. Um, you know, the NASDAQ 100 has led this, this market up. And the NASDAQ 100 is simply, uh, I always call it a tech fund with an Amazon kicker. That's what I jokingly refer to it as. And what I'm referring to there, if you look at, let's just jump over to the chart here. Uh, I have a chart for comparison between QQQ and XLK. XLK in the blue here, QQQ. This is a two-year daily chart. You can go back any point in time. And as you can see, they mirror each other nearly perfectly. So because of, there's so many tech companies in there, uh, Apple's the biggest component. It's overweighted in both of those. Uh, so uh, if you want to know where the Qs are going, you just need to know where tech is going. Uh, again, they're, they're near perfect mirrors. Um, this is also my watch list. This is what we'll go through today. I'll touch on the sectors. And jumping back to that original chart, let's grab that. Uh, when we look at this, like I said, the you know you get down to telecom, basic materials, utility, and energy. At this point in time, they don't make up uh, much. Uh, oh, historically they do. There used to be a time where energy, at one point, if I recall, not not too many years back, was the largest sector. Um, but this is what we're looking at now. And um, yeah, so I'll go through these. And about the time I get to staples. Uh, anything beyond there is really not that important as far as what it does compared to the market. But it, there are some tells because you have stocks like utilities, for example, that are defensive issues. And uh, that shows when the institutions start worrying about uh, a slowdown in the economy or other sectors like tech getting too hot, they'll start moving money into utilities um, because you're not going to see such a huge drop if things get ugly. Okay, and so again, although it's not really the broad market, this is where a lot of this is where money has been chasing stocks, uh, technology. So I'll just go through the various time frames. Is a swing trader, um, even a trend trader, uh, the my my three go-to time frames are the 60-minute charts, daily chart, and weekly. So we'll just focus on those real quick or run through those. Uh, a lot of this isn't anything new. I've been covering the broad markets pretty pretty uh, frequently lately. But now we have, you can see here, and this is what I like to see. We have negative divergence. In fact, we have it all the way from the 60 minute out to the weekly charts. Now it's been building on the weekly and daily charts for a while. And as I often say, divergences are not a sell signal. They're far from it. They're an indication that a trend reversal is likely. Um, and you need to see that divergence confirm, which you have here now on the cues. Uh, so we have confirmed negative divergence. Trend indicators are bullish at this moment, being above the zero line here. Uh, this was a level I was focused on recently, that 153.85. I think it's still a very significant level. Last week, we punched up through it. We made a marginal, slightly new high. As I mentioned, that was a divergent high. It was just an extension of the divergence that started back at this point, right? Uh, trying to grab a, a vertical line. There we go. This point back here, that's where the divergence started. We had this wedge pattern. It broke down. It played out for a, a little bit of a correction, a little pullback. We punched up, made a marginal new high, and as I often say, breakouts that occur uh, with divergence in place, negative divergence, uh, are have a much higher uh, failure rate. Uh, so, so far, those highs failed to stick. Uh, we've moved back down, and now we're back testing this 153.85 uh, level. So it's, it's pretty simple. Um, you know, the bullish case would see that 153.85 level uh, defended, and prices move up, and then it would be very bullish if we can take out these previous highs right here, here, and here. That that wipes out that negative divergence. Um, but as of now, it's in place, and so these are levels I'm watching. Very near term, I'm watching 153.85, ideally a 60-minute or even a closing uh, daily close below that. There's a gap right here you can see that uh, needs to be or may be backfilled. Most gaps are usually backfilled at some point. Uh, so watch what happens there if the Qs do, uh, do break through 153.85. Uh, there's your next support would be the top of the gap. 
and then the bottom of the gap you can see the levels there and then my targets uh, again I still favor the same scenario I've been favoring for the last couple of weeks here which is a move down to 151.20 reaction there and then a move down to 149.21 uh, with another reaction and we'll just have to if if that does play out and as we start to approach that level we'll have to take a look at the charts what's developed on the daily charts even on the weekly charts and then see if that will be the end of the pullback um, and if that fails to materialize again I just showed you the bullish scenario if this level holds we punch up uh, we continue on to new highs we burn through these divergences well that this one didn't play out but I still give it a very good chance that that's going to play out uh, that is my preferred scenario, and I feel, uh, you know, pretty confident about it right now. Uh, now, let's just look at the daily chart. Very busy chart here, but the point being you have a divergent high. You had a divergent high here. You can see they're all marked here, divergent high and corrections. This is a two-year uh, daily chart. Uh, there was a divergent high just to the left there in their correction. So, um, you know, pretty much without fail, when you have these confirmed divergent highs, they're followed by a correction. Those corrections can range from, you know, maybe just a few percentage points. On average, probably 5%, maybe a little bit more. And when you go back a little more in time, we look at this two-year chart. This was uh, These were marked on the daily. The divergences aren't shown down here. Now I flipped to a two-day period, so it shows me four years of price history. But again, just look at the pattern. Um, it's, you know, you can try to second guess this all day long, uh, but these, these have played out, and that's what we're looking at, again, is another divergent high. And um, I expect nothing less than at least a correction down to that level that I just showed you a minute ago there. Uh, all right, so that's the four-year history of the uh, divergent highs. Now this one, this is a weekly chart. This is 10 years of price history, weekly candlesticks, and I haven't covered this one in a while. And the reason being there haven't, there hasn't been any really uh, new developments. You know, the primary trend has been bullish and up, and I've just been looking at the 60 minute charts to try to gauge the near term direction of the market. Trend has been res uh, relentless for a while now, um, but for the first time in actually, you know, in years, uh, we now have negative divergence it's still potential we need to confirm it we need a bearish cross on the ppo you can see the ppo line starting to roll over as i zoom in there uh, hasn't yet crossed down below the signal line if and when that happens and if it happens before we take out that previous high we will have the first negative divergence on the weekly time frame since back in 2016 uh, early 2016 uh, and I want to show you what's happened uh, again 10 years of price history if I missed any drop me a line let me know uh, there's one divergence not drawn out there you can see the negative divergence so we've had one two this is really uh, uh, two consecutive this was an extension of the first divergent high so in other words you can see the yellow lines you can see it down there on the PPO you can see that clearly sloping down the RSI so we had, you know, long-standing divergence that built for a couple of years here. That resulted in a 26% correction, followed by a, you know, popped in marginal new high, just like that 60-minute chart, uh, chart I just showed you. We had the first, you know, shot across the bow, I call it, pushed back up, made a marginal new high, failed to hold it. That's called a bull trap. Uh, when you break out to new highs, bulls get excited because new highs on face value are bullish. But again, I don't chase them if they come with a divergent high. That gave you another drop of almost 20% there, second correction. Uh, go all the way back. The last time we had negative divergence on the weekly chart before that was back in 2012. That was followed by a 13% drop. Again, these are all measured from the highs. Uh, and then you go back to 2011 and you had a 17% correction there after this divergent. You know, that was the that's just consecutive negative divergences. The divergence started here, uh, finished there. You can see it down in, on the indicator. So one, two, three, four, now five divergent highs in the last decade. Uh, and that covers this entire bull market. And, you know, I think it speaks for itself now. Uh, again, as I often say, divergences in themselves are not a sell signal. What is a sell signal is a break of support. So here is a very well-defined uptrend line in QQQ. A lot of reactions there. We had a little intraweek pierce, but you can see that candlestick body closed right on that trend line. That trend line comes off that this, this first correction. We had that flash crash in the Qs. Uh, so two, three, numerous reactions there, four reactions more, most recently. This is the big level to watch. This is our well, what I 
refer to now as the primary uptrend line. We had a primary uptrend line back here, this yellow one right there. When that broke, that, that was the, the spark for that flash crash, that 26% drop. Again, the drop started off the divergent high, but uh, you can there was still a lot of meat left on the bone after that, that yellow uptrend line gave way. And so then that set up this new uptrend line here. And it, it really takes the same shape. It's a rising wedge. If you look at the divergence here and the trend line there, just like we had uh, this yellow line, this most recent one. So it, it terminated in a wedge type pattern, just like we're in now. And there's not a lot of, the thing is, there's not a lot of room for error here. And the reason I'm spending time on these various time frames, if that 60 minute chart plays out, and if it plays out to uh, what I was talking about there, all we have to do is fall about three and a half percent. And I'm just kind of going forward a little here. If you look at the measuring tool to the left, let's say it took a little bit, you know, a week or two, a couple weeks to do it. Call it three and a half percent. We're then, then at that trend line, testing that trend line. And if we go much below that, and if we have a weekly close, so if you want to replicate this on your chart, use a log scaling and uh, and set a price alert for a break of that trend line. Because it's a weekly chart, you want to see a weekly close. Otherwise, you you might get one of these intra-week breaks only to see uh, the Qs rally back up. And I'll say this now. Uh, I favor, usually when you haven't visited a support level in a while, last time we tagged it was back here in uh, late uh, the end of uh, uh, September. But uh, once if we fall there, we'll probably have at least a minor reaction there. Is it possible to slice through it? Yeah, but more than likely a reaction. A reaction could be a pause or a consolidation. Uh, so just keep that in mind. That's that's the most likely scenario. So those are some levels to watch on the queues. And now we'll look at SPY. Okay, starting out the 60 minute time frame, I've covered this quite a bit recently. We have this uptrend line here, pretty well defined, breakdown, back test, uh, hit that first support slash target, bounced, back tested again. And that's also, uh, there's also a resistance zone there. And you can see these are levels I've covered in the last week or two. I, haven't, I don't believe I've moved these lines since then. You can see how well the uh, SPY is behaving off those levels. In other words, got up to this one, the 258.88 level. Uh, it was the top of that gap right there and stalled in reverse. Came down below that 258.39 level. And you can see that's been a ceiling since. So you had this punch up and uh, we've been moving lower. So uh, uh, bulls want to see a break and, and move back over 258.39. Uh, next level is at 258.88. We've yet to close, you know, on a 60-minute candlestick close above it. Uh, so that would be bullish and bearish would be uh, a move down from here. There's a gap right here to be backfilled. So you look for the top of that gap to be the first resistance level, the bottom, the second. And, uh, and then you can see the lines on my chart from there if those levels go. And uh, like, as with the QQQ, I can almost all but assure you uh, if the Q's hit my target, SPY is going to follow suit and look something like this, uh, down to that 253.87 level at least. And then again, we'll go from there, expect a reaction if and when we get there. Uh, and then whether that'll be the end of that pullback or not, we'll have to look at the charts at that time. Okay, daily chart of the SPY. Here's the most recent divergent high. You can see the negative divergence down here on the PPO as well as the RSI spans from here to here. Uh, there's your, your comparable uptrend line on the daily chart here. Your, your, the uptrend line to watch comes off the lows back in early 2016. Uh, several reactions along the way. I have a minor trend line there as well. And uh, you can see some of the levels down there. This is the uh, if things get ugly target all the way down to 219.63. Otherwise, these are the stops along the way uh, that I would see uh, if and when, again, your sell signal will come on a break of this trend line, especially daily close. And you'd see little reactions along the way like this, something along these lines. Uh, let's take a look. And you can see here a history of the um, divergences, of course. Here's a divergent high, 6.5% drop. Another divergent high, 5.11 uh, drop. And uh, now a divergent high here. So we can look at the two-day period chart. You can see it there. So we're wedging up right now. And again, I'm giving you these levels. These are the, the levels to watch, uh, especially on that daily chart with a daily close. And when we look at the weekly chart of the SPY, Similar to the uh, QQQ chart I just covered, I don't have all the notes here, the corrections, all that, but you can see we're wedging up. There's a well-defined trend line off the lows back in early 2016, 
and uh, we're wedging up with negative divergence. Not yet confirmed, but the PPO looks like it's rolling over, at least flattening out here. Uh, if it crosses down, if we get any downside, especially a break of that trend line, we will have confirmed divergence, negative divergence there. It's slightly higher high on the RSI, but what's interesting to note is how overbought we are, uh, very overbought. Okay, and then to wrap up real quick with those sectors I mentioned, again, uh, the telecom uh, or technology, I'm sorry, uh, the chart I just showed you, these change over time. I haven't updated these these notes here. So I'm showing back a few months ago, it was a 23% weighting in, in technology, and that pie chart I just showed you had it about 20.5%, so give or take. It's still the uh, heaviest uh, weighting. And again, it's simply a chart of QQQ. So I went over Qs, the Qs in detail, um, same levels to watch. But if you're looking at XLK, I have a slightly different draw. Here's that comparable uptrend line. And uh, what I note on this is you have a price channel here, slightly contracting between these two white lines, this uppermost line and this one. And then as I often do, I've, I've noted most price channels, you can draw a center point uh, line in the center and prices tend to, uh, that line acts as support when prices are above it. And then you get the breakdown. You can see that impulsive selling there. And then it acts as resistance when below. So you trade, they tend to trade in strong uptrends up above it. Um, that one we had a breakdown and then you snap back above it. But for the most part, when you get down below it, you can see here it acts as resistance and you stay below it until you break up above. So we're above it now. And I also, you can note these yellow uptrend lines. These are what I call minor uptrend lines within that channel. And you can watch those. So this is the most recent one. And so we have intersecting support levels. We have this minor uptrend line, this yellow trend line, as well as the center point of the channel. So that would be a, uh, you know, a sell signal on technology or XLK here. And uh, if, if and when we get that. So that's another level you might want to watch. And again, if tech goes, it's pretty safe to say the market goes. XLF, that's technology, I'm sorry, financials, and you can see there, here's a divergent high right here. Um, it's not labeled as such, but this is the negative divergence from this point to this point. Actually, it starts all the way back here. We had a divergent high right here, bearish rising wedge between, if you look at this line here and this line. We broke down, and that was followed by a nice drop. I guess we had an official trade back then. We hit that first target, and you can see how well that support level acted. It, it caught we had one, two, three visits of that level, and then that support held. So we never hit that second target, which was slightly below it down here, only a half a point lower. Uh, I guess I had it on that trend line, and uh, we continue to rally. Now, what we did, do, we touched that trend line again. You can see it right there. So we have numerous reactions along the way, and that's an important trend line to watch. Uh, we also have um, what stands out to me looking at this chart is you had a... Uh, Two, high, two reactions there, actually a third reaction. So you had a triple top and then we broke out. Uh, so this is uh, bullish as long as it sticks. However, if that fails, that was a solid breakout, a very well watched, you know, tested resistance level that should now act as support on any pullback. So you want to watch that level. Uh, I'll give that to you. That's uh, 20, about 25.50. And then just below that, you also have uptrend line support. So, uh, you know, as of now, uh, there's no arguing that the uh, financials are in a, in a well-defined uptrend, strong uptrend. But uh, if you're looking for a, a high probability sell signal, it would be a break of that 25.50 level as well as this uptrend line here. Um, and again, the negative divergence indicates that that's likely. But as of now, the trend indicators are bullish. You can see this PPO coming back in, starting to curl up as it tests that zero line. So this one, you know, has a way to go. Right now, I uh, definitely, you know, not recommend uh, going in trying to short it here. There's no, there's really no sell signals in the fact the trend indicators are bullish. Uh, so you just have to watch that one. Okay, the third largest sector in the S&P 500 coming in at almost just about 15% now, 14.74 uh, on that pie chart I just pulled up, uh, is XLV Healthcare. And you can see here we have a divergent high. We had a divergent high. In fact, we had divergent highs here at this point, and it did lead to a correction. You can see the correction there. Uh, so again, it's not as if these divergences don't work. Uh, you're in a primary uptrend, so they're good for corrections or pullbacks. Uh, we had a divergent high there, but here's your trend line. We have one, two, three, 
now four reactions and this is interesting uh, just like uh, the financials I just covered or was yeah was it the financials you have intersecting support levels you have trend line support as well as uh, price support here about right about where we are roughly 80 80 you can see that line there it's at uh, a little under 81 and we have numerous reactions one two three the next day there uh, we broke above it that was bullish we back tested it and that held, but so far we're cracking down below that level. We've already back tested. Usually, when you get at a break, uh, when you get a breakout to new highs, you get one back test uh, if you get it at all, and then off to the races. Well, we already back tested, and now we're coming down through it. We back tested again. It held, but we had a very muted reaction, and now we're starting to limp down through that trend line with the trend indicators now bearish. You can see the PPO is crossed below zero. Uh, it's been below it for several days now, and um, that's that's something to watch there uh, so watch for a break of this trend line that would be your really a break of the trend line and a solid move down below you know to be safe just say those recent lows right there let's say call it 8050 so if you see XLV crack below 8050 especially on a impulsive red candle a daily close and a close below this trend line uh, that would certainly uh, be bearish and, and most likely indicate that the uh, uh, we're looking at a drop from where we're at now about uh, at least almost five percent or so to my first target and that would be my target right here a minimum target I should say swing target down around 76 80 or so all right uh, now as we go through these consumer discretionary is still uh, an important one because uh, that comes in about 13% weighting of the S&P 500. So the story on this one, like everything else, you can see the corrections, the divergent highs, the corrections. Uh, it's not rocket science. So a uh, divergent high here. That was a relatively minor correction, a few percentage points, another divergent high, another correction, and now another divergent high. I don't have it labeled here, but this is the divergence right here. You can see the divergence there between the, uh, you know, go down below, see the PPO at lower levels still hasn't taken out the previous highs nor has it taken out these highs as 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 the uh, rsi but we do have a breakout i circled that so breakouts are you know face value bullish and they're bullish until and unless they fail as i mentioned most breakouts with on a that have negative divergence do fail but this one hasn't yet just so a level to watch and that level to watch would be right around give or take 9250 uh, again that that that's what you want to watch on a back test because we had one two three uh, failed attempts to break through there and finally we punched through there and made it on the fourth so uh, if you get a pullback watch that 9250 level if you fall back in this range um, that would be uh, bearish and we could you know if we, especially if we broke down at the bottom of that range because that's about almost a year long trading range nine months or so maybe all right uh, and then as we go down the line I think industrials are important to mention too that's XLI uh, you can see a, a pretty well defined uptrend line and, uh, and we're right on it so this is the point of doing this video we have a lot of these sectors some of those there's a little wiggle room they're they're well within their uptrends uh, but you have others that are now challenging some pretty pretty important support levels such as this trend line support you can also put a line here which I should have there for that previous reaction high so there was a breakout to new all-time highs but we're coming in and back testing that so again I really like it when I see intersecting support levels uh, it's good to go long if you're bullish if I could make a case to go long I would you know I can see the PPO trying to curl up here it's testing that zero line so maybe another bounce in fact I'd be surprised if we didn't get a little reaction off this level um, but if we break it uh, that's bearish and if you really if you put up charts of all these sectors yeah I keep them all on a watch list all 11 sectors uh, the ETFs so I can quickly go through and if you start to see three or four uh, of the sectors within the S&P 500 especially these big overweighted sectors the one that make up the ones that make up 10 percent or more of the s p 500 if they start to crack in close proximity that's about as good a sell signal as you can actually as you can ask for in the market for a swing trade short i'm talking a short that can last weeks if not months staples this is one of the sectors i was you know recently bullish on pointed out a few months back including did a video on it covering a lot of stocks like walmart costco all those those companies and they've done real well recently uh that divergent low extended a little beyond where i first started highlighting it around right here went down low and then boom there's the reversal so we've rallied nicely again this one you know of all the sectors out there it was uh, it, the major sectors the, out of the 11 within the S&P 500, this is the one I could make case to go long. Now, you understand this. Technology has gone up, and it might even have gone up more than than uh, this, uh, what is it, 
you know, four or five percent since I, you know, that divergence played out. But I couldn't make a case. You can't just jump in. You don't buy, or at least me, I don't buy something simply because it's going up. If I find an objective level pullback to support, there's some bullish chart pattern setting up, and you have a defined entry uh, or an objective entry, um, then you can make a long out of it. So, you know, tech, semiconductors, they're going up, they're going up, they're going to go up till they just stop going up. And I haven't seen a, you know, a, a very objective entry. They're very stretched and there's a lot of hot air. And when that trade turns, it can turn very fast. I've seen it before and you can, you can see, you know, weeks and even months of gains wiped out in just days. And that's probably what's going to happen when you finally uh, see the momentum turn in those tech, tech stocks, semiconductors and all that. Um, so there's XLP. Would I chase it here? No, because you've already had a nice run. You're oh, near term overbought near term. If you look at the 60 minute charts and you're at resistance, these were my you know target levels, resistance levels. And you can see we hit this one. We've consolidated around there. If we get up through there, probably move up here to about 5580 to about 56 would be the next target. But uh, uh, it's a little stretch now. I think it'll need to come back in, maybe test this level again. All right, let's move on to the next one. We're almost done. Energy, XLE. Energy's interesting. I've been tracking this quite a bit. We were along the energy stocks uh, via, via XOP officially on a trade. And this is XLE. You know, XOP, XES, those are other energy sector ETFs. Those are subsectors that are encompassed within XLE. XLE is just pretty much everything. Um, here you go. So you can see uh, this divergent high. And when you get divergences on the daily, that's when I take note. Again, those are swing trades that often last weeks and possibly months or more. Uh, right now, the trend indicators of PPO is still bullish and it's testing that zero level. Um, we pulled back to support. These were, you know, S1, S2, S3, support one. We've held that support for a while now. If it cracks, these are the additional levels. I'm just standing aside of this trade for now, but I did want to point it out because that comes in at about 7%. And then as you, from here, you, the, the uh, weightings get a lot smaller. We have, uh, where was it, utilities. There's utilities. Now, utilities, you can look at that there at all-time highs, and there's been a lot of, you know, consistent buying pressure in those recently. So the institutions or individuals or both have been moving into the utility stocks. They got a little ahead of themselves, and they also had a divergent high. You can see there on the daily chart. So I wouldn't be chasing utilities. In fact, uh, based on these divergences and everything else, we might get a reaction off this trend line. You can see it there, pretty well-defined. But a crack of that trend line would be a sell signal. I uh, don't really have targets on this chart now, but I wouldn't chase utilities at this point. I think they, uh, um, the risk reward just doesn't look attractive. And then we have basic materials, XLB. Uh, not much to point out. There's negative divergence. You can see as I highlight these lines here and here, uh, it's not really drawn on top, but that's the divergence. So it's really walk, working its way up within a price channel. We're right in the middle of that price channel. Um, trend indicators are t back testing the zero line right now. Uh, that one's in no man's land, meaning between support and resistance. So really I don't have much of an opinion on that one right now. And then telecom XLT, XTL, I think. Yeah, there it is. Telecom's interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. We have this uh, double top pattern here. Uh, you can see the two arrows marked there. And then I boxed it in. This is the, the range that we've been trading in uh, for the last uh, year or so, this sideways range. Now, a double top pattern to get the projected move, you take the width of the pattern. And if you break down below the base of the pattern, you add that. So you can see right now we're back testing the bottom of the range, this yellow box. Uh, we broke down. We hit this, you know, just beyond this first support or second support zone had a kickback rally and we're back testing. So watch for a failure on XTL on the telecom stocks. If they fail here and start to move lower, uh, there's a good chance we're going to hit this key support zone. That measured target goes right to the top of that support zone. Uh, so if we do fail here, that would be my preferred target. If you're looking to short this one, certainly objective here. We're hair above just inside. But if you look back, these are the, all these lines here are, are resistance lines. They were former support levels. So I would say any bounce back should be contained by 69.20 or so. So you could put a stop just above that. Uh, we're not far from it now. Uh, so objective trade. So if we roll over, you're looking at an XLT all the way down to that target zone or top of that target zone, about a 9.5% drop down to the 62 level. Trend indicators, when you look down here, uh, trend is bullish when the PPO 
9 EMA, the signal line, is above zero, bearish when below. So you can see these, I just boxed in when we cross below. So you can see how, how well it's done uh, to tell you, get out, and we were bearish here. We had a brief whipsaw signal. That, we were only bullish for a little while. So this really was about your sell signal right here. Uh, and even though it was a sideways trend, we have moved lower since then. And the trend that you can see is still clearly bearish. Yes, we're making a bullish crossover right now. Um, and you just have to watch that. If the PPO signal line crosses back below zero, um, then the trend is, and that if it does so, we'll have moved back within this pattern. So uh, not one of my favorite sectors, but I just wanted to point that out there because there's some interesting developments. All right, let's wrap it up here. That covers the markets as well as uh, all the sectors within the S&P 500. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoy.